G'day guys, Daniel from Unidan Engineering here. Today we're going to talk about Hutchinson rims and why we choose to, to uh, install the Hutchinson rims on our trucks. Um, for many, many years, since 1940-something, uh, Mercedes have been installing a steel rim on their Unimogs. Um, perfectly fit for purpose, they do a great job. Do we need Hutchinson's off the road? Not necessarily. Do we need Hutchinson's to be safer and be, uh, let our tyres down to a lower level? Yes, it definitely helps. Um, with the brand new Unimog, this is a U5023, they already come with a steel rim and a beadlock ring inside it. So it's going to give us just as much capability as a Hutchinson rim. The only reason we don't particularly um, like them, particularly in Australia, is that we've got very few places around the country that have the correct machine to remove that uh, beadlock rim inside our steel rim. For us to change the, uh, the beadlock ring out of here, we've got a special tool but I believe there's only about four or five other people in the, in the country that have the special tool. So getting that off is a real nightmare if you're out in the bush and you need to change your tire. If we flip over to here, we've got the Hutchinson rim. Um, we've been importing these now for since 2009, I think our first unit came in. Um, these days we're doing a couple of hundred units a year. The, for what we like about the Hutchinson rim, obviously the ease of fitting out in the bush, they're a lighter rim tire, 100% bead locked. Uh, also, they one very important thing is everything's nice and flush here. Obviously, this sticks out this the furthest, most protruding part of the of the vehicle. And when you're in the rocks and bashing through the bush, the first thing that's going to get damaged is your outside of your rim. So, um, with Hutchinson, we've got our nuts and we've got our studs all the same length. So there's no possibility that those uh, those studs are going to get damaged and prevent us from winding that nut off. Uh, secondly, um, we do these CTIS covers in a new truck with central tire inflation. Very important that we protect our hoses under there from rocks and debris. So on a new truck, they're, they're, they're a must. On an older U1700, they're more for cosmetic purposes. Uh, if they do, we think they look great, but um, they're also going to protect your, your hub from a bit of damage as well. Again, as I mentioned a moment ago, the biggest advantage of the Hutchinson over the Mercedes steel rim is that we can change the bead or the, take the tyre off the rim on the side of the road, which we're going to demonstrate to you shortly. Um, a lot of people say to us, why Hutchinson's? What's the difference between Hutchinson's and a steel rim? Because a lot of people don't know. They've never pulled a tyre off a rim. Uh, they don't know what goes on inside. So we're going to explain that in just a moment. I'm going to explain uh, a little bit about a tyre and then about a standard rim and then the Hutchinson rim. So for those of you who, who don't know, the bead of a tyre is this section here. Now, every single manufacturer has a different thickness bead. So when we've got a Michelin XL, we can, so we can supply a beadlock rim and the Hutchinson's to suit the XL. Um, there's also another, a few other brands that we use that have a different size bead, so then we can supply a different thickness beadlock. So that's very important. There's no point trying to uh, jam a 30 mil bead in here because it's going to have no uh, traction on this beadlock at all. Now, the difference between a standard steel rim and a beadlock is that essentially is going to slide in here and it's going to fit loosely in between here. The only thing holding that tyre to that rim is air pressure. So when the it'll come in, it's nice and floppy. When you put air pressure in it, it'll hold this out and that's the only traction you've got between your rim and your tyre. Now, um, that's all well and good if you're running around at highway pressures, but every time you bring your pressure down, there's more and more of a risk of this de-beading. Uh, if you're on the highway and it de-beads, it can be catastrophe chances are you're, you're going to have a lot of trouble handling your, tr your truck when it's out of control. Um, secondly, when you are off-road, you're in sand and mud and rocks, uh, if this is loose in here, you get a lot of debris down in the side of your tyre, and best case scenario, you're just gonna, your tyre's going to go flat and you'll have to repair it on the side of the road. When we come over to the Hutchinson, we have a positive bead. So exactly the same setup here, you've got one be inner bead, outer bead. Uh, these here, are obviously this part's removable. Your tyre comes in and it sits in these positions here. As we do up the, the, the nuts on the outside of the rim, this clamps up, squashing your outer bead, your bead lock and your inner bead all together. So you can go down to pretty much the zero PSI and you will not be able to separate that bead. So a couple of things for that. Off-road ability, sensational. The lower the tyre pressure, the bigger the footprint. The more you're stuck, the lower your tyre pressure, your chances are of getting out. Secondly, in an on-road situation, if you do have a small puncher or even a blowout, your, your tyre is not going to fall off the bead, making a, a dangerous situation even worse. I hope that explains it. I'm going to hand over now to Connor. Uh, Connor's going to show you how we in-house fit these, fit these to the tyres. 
Okay, so when you receive a Uniden Hutchinson wheel, this is how it's going to come. Probably more so with all your nuts all ready to go. So what are you going to do with this now? Let's start by disassembling it because it's no good to you like this. So you're going to take your nuts off. Something I prepared earlier. Ready to go. So a little bit of a trick, you want to lift it level, otherwise you're going to take all your paint with you. Off we go. And then put that to a safe place gently. Away we go. Alright, so you can see there's a rim, there's an indent on the rim there. We'll come to that a bit later. Your bead lock needs to come off also. A little bit of love. That comes off also. There you go. So now you've got a basis of what's going to happen. Let's move to all the gear we're going to use for the build. All right. So over here you can see I've got this O-ring. All right. It won't go on yet, but that's going to go on the basis of your Hutchison rim. We'll get to that one. anti -seize, anything you want to nut or bolt to come apart later, you want to put anti on. Your tires aren't going to last forever, so you're going to want to take them off again. There's all your nuts. Put all your B-lock ready to go. Fork wrench, a big one. You don't want that B-lock coming off. So this is a 14 mil spanner and socket. That's going to be for your B-lock over there. You're only going to need that short term. Impact gun. So these are M16 bolts. So that equivalates to a 24 mil socket. That's for your nuts. If you don't have an impact gun on the side of the road in your workshop, ratchet is going to work fine. Bit of soapy water is going to be your best friend if nothing's going to play ball. Ready to go. Clamp. That's going to make your life a lot easier. It is possible to do without, but to get that bead lock inside that tyre, Clamp's going to be your friend also. This is a bit special. We'll learn about that in a second. At Unidam, we use this. You don't need it though. And this will be the replacement for this remote. So you're in the bush, you've got a standard XADF truck, got some Hutchison's. You will learn why you need some timbers later, or if you've got a Uniden crane, you'll learn why later as well. All right, so you got your new tire, you got your new bead lock. We got the luxury, everything's nice and clean at that moment. If you don't, if you're in the bush, it's dirty, you want to give everything a clean out because that's going to be in there for the rest of the life or until you undo it again. So we can see everything's nice and clean. If you've got a rag with some air, you'll clean it out, all right? So you got your bead lock. We got to get that into there, all right? That's going to be quite difficult how it sits right now. So let's put it on the ground, all right? Got your bead lock. You got your screws. This is where the 14... We've prepared, we're ready to go. We're going to take them off. Just one side, not both sides, all right? Put them somewhere safe, don't lose them, otherwise you're having a bad day. All right, see everything comes apart, it's going to move a bit easier for us now. This is where the clamp's going to come apart. You can see the width of the bead lock compared to the bead in the inside. It's quite a bit bigger and that's the idea of it to be clamping down. So. Your clamp's going to come in. Cool, we started it. All right, pump your clamp up. All right, soap water on the bead lock. Bit of soapy water on the actual bead. As you can see, we're ready to go. So, if this is the first time you guys are doing it, I recommend doing it in your own shed. You're not under stress. You're not on the side of the road at Simpson. You're going to have a lot more patience. You're going to have cold beer. Happy. So, so you're going to split that rim. It's half in already for us. All right. Twist it around. It's in. All right. While everything's nice and put loose, you don't leave that clamp in there for now. We'll come back to our bolts. Remember, NCs. Mid here and copy the other side. Don't put the bolt in the wrong way because then you won't be able to get the bead onto your rim. So just finger tight, start with, get the other one on.
nuts are loose, ready to go. A couple of things you want to check first before you do them up. Make sure this is all level and even because these brackets will twist. And if you do them up tight, they'll stay offset. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get this set. So just make sure that's flush, both sides ready to go. Cool. So your bead's in, set. Let's get as close as possible. Just sitting right. Take the clamp out. All right. Tie her up. Get nice and close, keep rolling it. Use your foot. So, so you can see how that bead's sitting in there. You want to get as flush as possible. Happy days. Step one done. All right, so you got your tire, you got Hutchinson rim. You've been kicking the bead lock in there, there's dirt on the floor and everything. You want this to be as clean as possible before anything's going, going to go forward, right? You drive a truck, you got air. So, blowing that off, got your rim. Blowing all the dirt off. You need to get a rag, just to give that a wipe as well, right? Again, soapy water is your best friend. Give this a quick run around. You can see I was doing the bottom half of that rim because that's where the contact's going to be in the beginning, all right? Everything's clean out of the way. Wheel it over. Rim's on, all right? You got your O-ring here. This is the thing that's going to stop any air leaks, so you really want that to be clean. Even just sitting on the floor here, I can feel the dust, any dirt that's going to be on it. You want to inspect it also because you don't want to get to the very end and you've got an air leak. You're trying to air up, air up your tire and you've got a massive leak, right? You're inspecting it, it's clean, ready to go, right? You've just dropped your rim over it. If you're in the dirt, you've probably kicked dirt up. You want to inspect everything. So that's going into that groove there. If there's any dirt in there, that's just going to undo all your good work, right? So having a look at that, that's good, ready to go. We're going to lay that over. Again, being mindful, like you got a serrated edge there, just make sure that everything can sit in there nicely. Run your finger along. See, I've come around. That's trying to pop out again. In. All right. Check, double check, triple check. That is a step you don't want to be doing again later, pulling it apart. All right. What's the next thing we're going to do? We've got to get the top of the bead lock onto the rim. Here's your nuts and bolts, gonna go on here. You want them to come undone again in the future? Any C's. Go around every single one. Any C's on all your bolts, ready to go to put your upper part of your bead lock onto the rim, all right? So again, soapy water. What you wanna do here is this, part of the bead is going to be sliding between rubber and aluminium. So it's going to be very tight. You can see there and there. Let's give us the best advantage we possibly can. Bit of soapy water. Again, like we pulled it apart, you want to drop it in nice and level, lining everything up. Cool. Where's our bolts? This is when at Union we got a fancy tool. So at Union, we got overhead cranes, it's a good luxury, and this is going to be the big advantage of getting this rim together. So what are you going to do in the bush? You don't have a Union crane, well, overhead cranes, but you do have Union crane, right? So you can do the exact same method with that crane hanging off the side of your truck. So in a moment, you will see why this is such a big advantage, and we'll also talk about the alternative. So you come nice and close T, you'll see what's about to happen. So we don't have any access to our bolts at the moment. As you see that happen, see the tire just lift off? And we're gonna adjust that. 
All right, so what we've done, we've brought the rim up to the outer bead lock because the tire we see on the ground, we've taken the weight off the tire. And in a moment, you'll see we'll get that nice and tight. If you don't have a crane, what's an alternative to getting the rim up higher so the tire is not just sitting on the ground? Some pieces of timber. You're in the bush, there's timber everywhere. You keep some in your, in your truck all the time. So you want to lay that on top of the, under the rim and you're good to go, same process. We've got everything set up. We just can't get to the bolts. What we're going to do is you see the tire is just off the ground. All right, same process if you've got a union crane. What I do, I get myself standing on the inner of the bead lock. Make sure your boots are nice and clean, otherwise you're going to scratch a very expensive rim. Boom. Start that. One side done. Grab another nut. Two. Three, all right. We better have more, more the better, but we can work with this, all right? All right. See how much that came down already? You really wanna make sure this comes down nice and even. You're watching, also looking through, making sure that O-ring has not popped out, isn't being pinched, because you're gonna have a leak, all right? Work your way around. You guys would have seen how much that rim had to collapse under the torque wrench. Um, watch how even you bring it down. You're looking at that inner O-ring, making sure everything stays nice and straight and where it should be. Um, nothing's torqued at the moment, right? So you can see we're pretty much down on the full level. We've got to torque everything up now. So M16 bolts, um, 200 newton meters, we do them. Uh, and we'll set this all up. There is a set procedure for hutches and rims to how to torque them up. Um, You'll see that as I get this set up. There's a lot of bolts here today, so a marker is a good way to know where you've been. Also, I like to mark one particular side the whole way around. So if you're freshly doing this and putting this straight onto your, onto your truck, you can see where the mark is. And if it's spun, you'll see that it's actually it's coming loose. So. If you keep everything uniform, so you can check it later, and especially if you've done it yourself, you know what to look for. So I'm gonna go across. Okay, so we've torqued all the bolts up, we're ready to put air in. So it doesn't matter if you've got CTIS, RTIS, or you're just doing it off the side of the truck, you're doing it at the servo, you're doing it off your compressor, you always want to check the leak. So what we do is we squirt a soapy water on the inner bit of the beadlock, make sure air's not coming this way, soap water on the outside of the beadlock, so just like that, air it up. If you've got bubbles, you've got problems. Let's not see bubbles. Um, all right, guys, hopefully you learned something out of that today. Uh, it's been something we've been managed to put together for a lot of years now. Um, hope you learned something. As Connor said, um, there's a lot of information there, so watch the video over and over. But as Connor said, check for leaks. Check for cleanliness because cl a, a dirty tyre is going to cause leaks. So unfortunately, if it does leak, you're going to have to take a step back and go through and make sure you've cleaned it all. But yeah, happy trucking and um, hope this was helpful. See you guys.